Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Senjian on the Nintendo Switch. This one, it's a action RPG roguelike that it wouldn't be unfair to say an anime Hades, but can it do enough to stand alongside its peers? Or is this one just kind of best left alone? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. So Senjian, and no idea if I'm even close to pronouncing that right, but it has a minimal story. Opening the game, we get a decent enough cutscene. It basically explains there's an academy of sorts that trains warriors in mystical powers, and they're out to defend the world against a dark emptiness that basically threatens to take over. Things of course go wrong though, it invades, and now it's down to one of five warriors to push it back. Jumping into the gameplay then it opens with some minimal dialogue and then you won't hear another thing out of them until the very end of your run. For what is minimal text so maybe a couple of paragraphs total, it does suffer from some translation issues as well. Overall though like it's throwaway stuff and I would not come here for it. They do try to give some life to the characters with a short paragraph about each but it adds very little honestly and I wouldn't say it's exactly, you know, personality building. So gameplay on first you'll be choosing one of the five warriors, you get four female, one male and jumping into battle you will get two choices here, story or guard mode. We'll start with story here but I stuck to the character Yuan personally, though I will say here each contains a very similar skill set which is basically a standard attack, a dodge which kind of adds invincibility frames, a cooldown special and then an overpowered special as well. You will also then collect special items in world attached to the left and right trigger which are typically some sort of a attack like say a turret that you drop or a bomb and then my personal favorite also a health flask. The game's opening issue though is it really lacks any sort of tutorial, it throws you straight into this world, there's no guidance and you've really got to learn by doing. That would be fine if it was just hack and slash combat but it's when it starts to mix in you know the RPG elements that it took me a little while to figure out what was going on. First up though you'll be facing tons of enemies and they will drop coins, the in-game currency, XP orbs for leveling up and then green orbs, these bump back up that health. This last one super important because there's no block in game, the only defense you have is to either run away or to use your dodge. Enemies here though, there's a decent variety, you got varying levels as they do also level up as you progress in game, but you'll find simple drones that just charge and you know overwhelm to magic to those that explode to healers, wind attacks, ground attacks, those that have fire. I did appreciate the variety and it kept me on my toes throughout as different waves and different combinations they came towards me. For the RPG elements, so you'll be collecting two things, or at least you will on that first run. That is story relics, they stick around after you've found them the first time. Then there's actually five of those for each character, and then also spirit items, they disappear after each run. Story items, character specific buffers, pretty minor, but they'll enhance abilities, so think fire damage increased or chances of a critical hit improved. The spirit items though, you can carry a ton of these. These are the real path to victory. You can hold up to 48 while also adding to them, improving them, and then they just add some serious abilities to your repertoire. Everything though here from a chance you may regain health on attacking enemies or even just on a timer every few seconds to ice shards that rain from the sky to rock formations that literally come up from the ground. Finding as many of these as possible is going to be the way to beat this one and my build that got me to the end of the game was one that basically just regenerated health every 5 seconds. I found one kind of buffer like this and then found many and by the end game I was near a mortal hacking away at this world regaining like 25 health every maybe five seconds. The problem here though is because you hold so many it really does just completely overpower you or at least just a little bit but the game's difficulty curve almost felt backwards. It started really hard and just got easier as it went on. Even as I jumped up to the upper difficulty there's two difficulties here that is easy and hard. I think cutting back on space here would have made for more strategy and forced you know players to switch things in and out. This game just kind of bundles them all on top of each other till you're basically reaching god status. So that kind of leads into the combat too, it is fun but it feels more like button mashing than say Hades skill based approach. This is just flashy moves, some cooldown management don't get me wrong but otherwise yeah a whole lot of flash and when you have a ton of enemies on screen I challenge anyone to understand what the hell is going on, I just watched my health bar to ensure I was winning. Now that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it though, it's fiscal and it's for sure entertaining to watch, it's just not what I would consider smart. 
These collectibles though, these spirit items, you'll find them in all sorts of places. You can see overpowered enemies drop them. There's boss moments of varying quality, think like traits and minor bullet how, or just like learning a very basic pattern, but yeah, they drop them too. And then you can come across towers where you'll get a choice of two, but here choose wisely because whichever one you choose, the other one disappears. Outside of that then you will find special items that can be attached to the triggers. Let's say you don't want to use it though, you can use it to power up what you already have. So for example, you can power up the health flask to have five charges. Then in the world you will get treasure chests as well that contain XP. The minor element of strategy to this one is actually managing that currency because to unlock a tower or a chest there is a fee. So it's working out what do you specifically need. I started myself with a focus on those buffers, you know, those specials, but with progression I slowly started to turn towards leveling up. And yeah, I did on a few occasions run out of cash. Problems then, well first off that tutorial, just want to reinforce that, it tells you really nothing and as you can see there's actually quite a lot of systems in here. Then the combat's a little clunky, it works good enough but some of the hitboxes seem slightly off, the responsiveness slightly lacking sometimes, feeling like they weren't quite doing what I wanted and yeah I think just the controls could maybe do with some minor tweaking, there's really no options in here at all. They're close but something just didn't quite feel 100%. Then the frame rate, it's targeting 60 but rarely reaches it and when you get a bunch of enemies on screen it can drop to around that 30 mark and it's really kind of aggressive in its movement even slightly below 30 as well and you will for sure feel that in the heat of battle. Finally the items did my head in they're great fun but if let's say an enemy drops one in battle and you move over it as you're swinging your sword like some badass a big bloody like text box pops up on screen and obscures the majority of the battlefield. This needs to be attached to a button because it always seemed to happen to me at the worst possible time so I could see I was having a fight in the background but there was just like a wall of text in front of me. I had fun though, the levels they are procedurally generated, it doesn't change too much, you know, rather just kind of the layout, it doesn't change the way they look as such, but you can see in the top left of the screen there's areas to explore, you're looking for a portal which is marked on your map, but you can basically go off that main path and just explore, and that's really how you're going to win this one. You'll be working through right around 7 or so stages then and 3 boss moments. I know a few people that are maybe 10 runs deep at this point still looking for that first victory, I actually managed this one on my 4th run and that run took an hour and 40 minutes. All in all maybe like 3 hours of gameplay but I will say I got lucky with kind of this health focus build. Replayability wise there's only 3 of the 5 characters available from the beginning, you'll unlock the other 2 with story progression, there's outfits to unlock, there's a hard mode online multiplayer though I couldn't find anyone to actually test it out with, online leaderboards which I always like to see because every run has a timer at the top of the screen and that's kind of it's going to be fun to kind of try and beat each other. And then guard mode. Guard mode, essentially tower defense, there's this cube thing in the middle of the room. You need to hold off waves as long as you can. It was a fun distraction to try out the other characters, but I won't be coming back. So graphically I love the way it looks, I wish it had more, first though the good, the animations are really good for our warriors, while they play very similar in controls, the attacks look unique, especially the umbrella attack that was one of my favourites. If you hold attacks down then they perform these combos as well and they look super fluid. Likewise as well, enemies they have some great visual style and animation as well. Generally the game is just a very clean look to it all, it definitely delivers on the anime influence, even if I will say for myself the character designs they are a little generic. Boss moments they're nice as well, kind of their animations, what they're doing on screen. I will say though their attack patterns just a little overly simplistic, they were very easy to beat. The bad, I like the levels and the way they look, but you essentially only visit like 3 locations over that 9 levels, would have loved to have seen more, they just kind of get... Yeah, repetitive. And then the flash, it looks great. I'm all about like flash, but by the end game, I have no idea what the hell was happening. Luckily, by this point though, I was the anime equivalent of the Terminator, but maybe just dialing it back wouldn't be like so bad because with all the buffers I had, you know, there was fire coming from the ground, my health bar was flying up, ice was raining from the sky and boulders were flying in as well. And that was all at once. So yeah, you know, looks good. But there's definitely an opportunity there maybe to pull it back just a little bit so I can figure out what the hell is going on. Audio finally and the attacks sound decent enough but there's a few sounds in here that are a little sharp honestly and low quality that definitely made me you know like wince just a little bit. Just super sharp and high pitched. And then the music decent enough as well, nothing incredible but it kind of ticks all the boxes of you know high stakes mystical with a few nice rhythms here and there. 
so overall Sengen is a funny one it has its fair share of design quirks and problems from that frame rate that's temperamental to say the least to a lack of tutorials to text boxes that often mask the screen yet I still had fun it's completely ridiculous and over the top at points and yeah you can kind of just get lost in all the flashy animations but I can't deny had a smile on my face as I crushed everyone in sight. There is though a ton of opportunity here for this one from small tweaks to potential additions like a story with some depth maybe but overall I don't want to call this average because sometimes having fun is enough and with that in mind today an above average 6 out of 10. Just come here willing to be forgiving of its shortcomings and do not expect it to last you long. Will you be adding this one to the library then or are you holding on to that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know so thank you all so much. If you do want to check that out for yourself I have linked it in the video description down below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.